Hi everyone, I'm uh, Dan Barr. Um, I'm going to talk a bit about a project I was involved in, uh, actually a few of them recently um, at, uh, at the office, um, where we basically had to determine, you know, it was refresh time on our hardware, we had to determine what are we buying, how much of it are we buying, uh, how big is everything going to be, and um, you know, how we went through that, uh, that basic process of, of planning out our capacity for our next refresh. Um, so the project was, hey, it's time to spec our cluster refreshes. This is a good thing, right? It's time to get new hardware, um, put new stuff in, all good. But, uh-oh, you know, the new CIO wants numbers. He wants to back up these purchases. So how do we do that? Um, and oh, by the way, we've got potential upcoming projects that haven't come to fruition yet. Uh, we've got a plan for future growth, um, and, and it's not easy to always go back to the well uh, for more budget uh, after the fact if we undersized to begin with. Um, but the biggest thing was I was being asked, you know, as we were going through this process several times a day to say, you know, well, what if we did this or this, or what if this project comes up, or what if this project doesn't happen? And I was constantly having to rerun my numbers um, in terms of my capacity numbers and, and what I was going uh, to provision. To uh, you know, build on that, we, you know, we're a relatively small environment uh, where I'm at, and uh, so we didn't have any of the uh, the nice capacity planning tools. Uh, you know, this would be things like VROPS or uh, VM Turbo, now Turbonomic. Um, nor did we have the time to learn them, even if we got them. Uh, we were on a pretty short time frame to get uh, some purchases in uh, in a budget cycle. Um, so even if you know we had sprung for some of those tools, there, there just wouldn't have been the time to learn them. Uh, we're also, you know, we're a customer, so we don't ac have access to partner-only uh, tools like the uh, like the VMR Capacity Planner. Um, nor did we have the budget to go engage a partner to do that for us. Um, and like I said, running those numbers by hand over and over for every different scenario my management could come up with um, got pretty old after the third or fourth time. Uh, besides that fact, uh, you know, I was also going to be needing to present this to our CIO, and I knew during that meeting he'd be asking, you know, different scenarios. So I needed to be able to rapidly come up with those answers for him. So as a solution, what I, you know, started with, uh, even even running the numbers by hand, um, was RV tools. Uh, I think a lot of people are probably familiar with that. Um, if you're not, get familiar with it. It is a great, great free tool. Um, for gathering basically any data that can be gathered through um, uh, the vCenter and then through the APIs, uh, uh, it gathers for you. And then uh, what's really nice is it can export all of this to Excel. So you can do filtering, summing up, and really really come to the, your, your current numbers uh, pretty quickly. Um, there's a little pro tip here. If you're a little more familiar with, with Excel, um, you can use pivot tables to really slice and dice that RV tools data that comes out. Um, uh, my buddy Gabe Mentz, uh, who's actually sitting in front of me right now, um, wrote a few blog posts uh, about doing this. So if you check out his site, um, he's got a few uh, RV tools and, and uh, Excel posts there on, on how to really uh, slice and dice that data. And the second half of what I ended up doing was I created my own kind of one sheet quick view Excel spreadsheet. Uh, this was something that I could bring into a meeting with, with management and show them, you know, it's, it's like showing your homework. It's, it's showing your work um, that, you know, that we were not just making up these numbers and, and coming up with them on our own. Um, and basically what it let me do is I would plug in uh, our data in terms of uh, CPU and memory and our storage provisioning and compare that and, and show that against whatever we determined the maximums we wanted to be in our new hardware would be. Um, but the, the big thing I did, needed to do too was uh, have an area where I could turn these potential projects on and off so I could quickly do that what if modeling and say, all right, if these three projects happen but this one doesn't, what, what do the numbers look like uh, after that happens? Uh, so I have actually put up this Excel spreadsheet onto uh, to GitHub uh, for now. So the URL's there. Uh, it's github.com slash danbar, and it's, uh, you know, the repo is capacity uh, hyphen planning. Uh, so feel free to grab it. Um, you know, I put it out under the MIT license, so do what you will with it. Um, and, you know, hopefully it can help some smaller shops that, you know, 
may not have you know the, these tools, like I said before, like we didn't have. Uh, so what does it look like? Um, basically, I, I, I was kind of inspired on this by the Microsoft um, Exchange sizing tool, uh, which is you know an enormous spreadsheet with with all kinds of information for exchange sizing and a lot more complex than what I ended up with. But that's kind of what sparked the idea. Um, so basically, in the yellow uh, boxes. Um, you enter your, your data, whether you're modeling future purchases or you're just looking at your current data to see where you stand. Um, then everything else is basically calculated. And then over on the right-hand side, after you've entered all your data, um, the consumption box is kind of the, that like red-green, you know, I did some conditional formatting there, and that's uh, what can really show where you're maybe over-allocated, under-allocated. Um, and kind of tune that in, in, in your specs. Uh, and this really helped us narrow down what we were going to buy and then how much of it we were going to buy. Because um, at the same time, we were also specking a storage refresh, uh, not just compute clusters, but also um, our primary SAN. So it was helpful to have our storage specs uh, in there as well and see what we were consuming on the VM side for storage. And then that section I talked about, these uh, I called it the new workloads section. It's basically you know, what, what are these future projects? What are these potential things that are going to come up? And then uh, for each, each line here, at an enable checkbox. So, you know, by checking that box, it turns off and on and off a Boolean field that's underneath it, and it either includes it in the calculations or takes it out, of, you know, zeroes them all out and takes them out of the calculations. And it immediately updates those consumption numbers that are a little further up. Uh, so you can really just quickly see the effect of, of what these projects are going to do on your infrastructure. Um, and then, you know, I also included uh, an organic growth uh, line item in there, uh, where I just basically took a percentage of our current allocations and added that in to see what that might look like. Um, and also, uh, you know, we're in a multi-site configuration, so I was also doing some modeling around what a DR event would actually do to our, our usage, so that if we needed to do that, um, I could plug those numbers in and see what that would do. So that's basically it. Um, you know, like I said, it was uh, you know we're, we're a small, medium-sized environment. Didn't have a, a lot of tools for doing capacity planning, but needed some answers quickly. And um, you know, just kind of came up with this to uh, to figure it out, and hopefully it can help someone else. Um, so there's my uh, Twitter account there. Another link to the uh, GitHub repo. And uh, thank you. <laughs>